What is going on? Welcome back to the YouTube channel, the vlog with Team Olympus. We are doing another video working on the Ultra 4. We're going to show you what we've gotten done right after this. We have been doing some work on the car, so let's just get right into it and show you what we've done. There it is. So we worked and worked and worked and worked. Changed a couple things. Changed the gusset on here. You saw me put it in the last video. Brought it down lower, made sure the sway bar clears and everything. We went ahead, finished up the front end. It's all welded up and we did get it painted with steel it paint. So that's all done. We've got a bunch of our uh, logo caps in there. Those things are pretty sweet. Got one there, there, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the only thing left up here, we need to add a little bracing to the steering plate. And then I've still got to add a tube here, but we'll get back to that. Um, I did have to pull out a couple of the tubes that I tacked in, the cross tubes, because I couldn't get the third member out. We wondered about that, and that's why we only tacked. Um, but it doesn't really matter now, because we added these tubes here that add a full support structure to the front. Um, but yeah, so we got everything up here. We're going to start putting that all back together. And then, uh, back here, looky here, we got a rear axle. All right. We did a lot of work in the back. Uh, we got our rear axle back from Western drive train. Like I said, had them double check the gears. Everything's nice and tight with that. Um, we went ahead and cut our second tabs. We reused one of the original tab setups from the axle and then modified the outer tab. So we're going to finish plating all that up um brakes so we got the rear brakes done uh actually they are plumb too we jordan had a hard line that he used we were actually able to reuse that so that is on then you can see our big willwood six piston calipers we're running the uh i believe it's the gt72 trophy truck rotor um the innovative machine hats this has the shafts everything in it set up so this rear axle is done we just got to hook up the drive shaft um and then finish a few things welding but we'll get all that done in the next day and then this thing is ready sway bar uh we got that set up as you can see here again with our links from innovative machine solutions we have the tabs tacked on i got to finish a little bit of structure there just a couple gussets um and that's finished so we have been very busy very 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 busy we also took care of a ton of stuff inside um created a carrier bearing setup here so we got the brace there and there and everything's done there the tranny mount t-case mount all that stuff is finished i uh, got the shifters hooked up you've got these uh cool carbon fiber shift knobs on it kind of see that there so i like these um yeah wiring cleaned up a bunch of stuff but still have to run everything most of this is just sitting here it's already pre-ran they have a specific place that they got to go and this goes up into the gauge cluster and then i just got to clean all that up uh, and then we got some boxes in to finish up our brake lines and everything for the whole system we only needed a couple lines because we have a few uh what else what else what else um just a ton of stuff we've been going through this thing top to bottom dropped off the panels today to get wrapped got a really sweet wrap design that i made and i'm excited about it um so tonight we have to finish up our custom steering pump bracket we need to mount remount our reservoir we pulled it off because it was in a uh in the way of our iller filter on the other side so we're going to remount that today um yeah so we're going to do a bunch of steering stuff and we're going to get all that figured out get some lines made tomorrow at a local hydraulic shop we only need a couple um, and just start putting this thing together. So parts wise, the only thing we're waiting on right now is a couple brake lines and a couple intercooler clamps. That's what it is. It's just a few minor things. So the rest is all assembly, a little bit of fab work, uh, but everything's going really well. So I'm expecting uh, that we should have this thing running and driving on Monday, wrap up a few little things on it and then be on the dyno at PFI on Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we're gonna get started on the steering stuff and I think Joe just got here. So let's get rolling It's from Daniel to Daniel <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we got a brake hat from innovative machine solutions. We were waiting on one So now we have all four uh, this bolts to our Willwood rotor and then the other thing is all our 
bunch of brake fittings. We'll kind of show you what we're doing and how that all goes together. And then this is our pinion bearing support for our third member. It's all pretty. Look at that. So shiny. All right, so we decided to go with a banjo bolt setup. Um, similar to a passenger vehicle. This is gonna give us a little more flexibility because we're not restricted to where it bottoms out and we can rotate this anywhere in this 360 degree pattern for our brake line. I leave Joe alone for five minutes and we already have a problem. This kit I ordered is not going together correctly. So we have our banjo bolt, we have our crush washer, the actual fitting, the washer, and the fitting. But, Ban banjo bolt. but when you tighten it down, it bottoms out, leaving a little gap. So this is not tight. Uh, so I think we're gonna try and find a different banjo bolt, or if I have to, I could put this bolt in the lathe. Uh, three eighths. It's got a tapered end on it, and I can shorten it. Man, why is nothing gonna focus? Well, I'm trying to focus, but anyways. I can shorten it and cut the taper in it, and it won't affect anything because it's all on the thread side. Uh, so we gotta figure that out. We're gonna find a solution and let you know what we do. Okay, interesting journey here. Um, went to get a fitting and somehow mixed up the fitting, went to another part store, got the right fitting, had to go back to the other part store to get the fitting that we mixed up, found it, and in all that, we did find one more problem. So these banjo bolts, you know, I wanna get this focused here. This is not an inverted flare. So that brings us to another problem. So all solutions have pointed to, I'm going to put this bolt into the lathe and I'm going to machine it to fit the fitting. So I've got to put an invert on the inside of the flares and shorten it by uh, about an eighth of an inch and I think we'll be fine. Okay, um, so Joe, this gets snug. I mean, I just, I tighten it by hand, and then like, it's like a spark plug. I put a wrench on it when about a quarter turn. And that's how tight it is. That'll work. Okay, a little bit of work, and uh, we got the fittings taken care of. So that's good, and looks like Joe's over here filling the tea case. Finally, using an 85 140. We have a lot of that. So, how much are you putting in there? About, I'm about four quarts right now. So, six quarts somewhere around there. Oh. <laughs> we got to overfill it a little bit and we move the vent to the top of it versus the normal spot because you can see it's clocked up a little bit. It's clocked opposite of what it probably would normally be. Oh, we got the uh, right yoke for the drive shaft, got that all taken care of. So, that's in. So, that's cool. Um, Making progress here, making progress. So we gotta wait on a couple of brake lines. They'll be here in a day. Um, they'll have the entire brake system plumbed. Uh, so next, steering. Joe and I are gonna work on some steering stuff next. Okay, so for those of you that pay attention, if you look back to this video that I'm gonna post a link to right here, you'll see that we had some trickiness with our accessories. The alternator, is actually mounted backwards to the engine. And that's because there's no room. So we put the steering pump, it's going down here. And we're actually running it off the rear belt, which is typically used for air conditioner. Air conditioner. That's right. 
Uh, and it's kind of cool, actually, a couple companies now make bolt-on brackets for TC pumps, but we're using a, uh, that pump, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a gear-driven pump. A guy named Scott Tremarco put this kit together, but it works really good. And then we're using a bunch of radial dynamic stuff. Um, but so we've got to finish our bracket to put the pump there, get it squared up and get that done. And we got to measure for all of our hydraulic lines and get those made in the morning. And then we'll have steering and brakes. Pulling the arm and the coil over out to make some space. Uh-oh. Well, that's a problem. Huh. Joe, you gotta move the fuel pump. I already planned on it. That actually, uh, we had talked about actually moving this flat after talking to Holly, so this just kind of confirms we're gonna move it over. So, I'm gonna give me an Allen head, I'll pull the fuel pump off, and we'll make some adjustments. Always a problem. Shiny, the axle is now painted, and the fuel pump's lower. So let's uh, get back to problem solving. This we're actually going to remount flat, basically like that. Uh, we were actually talking with Holly and they like it mounted like this anyways. And then I'm going to run a tube right here. Not only will that add a little more gusseting, but it'll add some protection to the pump. That's minimal. Right now, I got to get this guy mounted up. Oh, the bracket's in the way now. <laughs> The bracket's in the way? Yeah. Uh, here, just toss me that adjustable right there. Right here? Yeah. I gotta cut this bracket off anyway, so I'm just gonna bend it out of the way. Back into this. <laughs> so last time we worked on this bracket, we kind of had the idea we never fully finished it. So this has a little bit of adjustability this way. And then this has a swing down. I don't know if you can see that in there. But it's got a swing down here. So you loosen the bolt and then you tighten it up. Um, so really... I don't remember where else we were at. <laughs> no. I mean, that's that was the action. The, do you want me to do it again? <laughs> You're fine. No, I uh, I'm trying to get this pulley squared up, and I'm using the angle finder. This thing is a handy tool, and I'm measuring the angle of this pulley to this pulley, and I think, I mean, according to this. That's not accurate. Oh, I forgot the zero. <coughs> Some stinky stuff. Smell that paint and shooting gun. Well, the arms are out, so I painted the rear axle. Okay. So we zero it out. And right now, this is sitting um, right about 88 degrees. And then this guy. Holy crap, 88 degrees. Nice. That's within it, that's exact. Okay, uh, so let's... Throw a few more tacks on that yeah. thing so it doesn't move. <laughs> well, helmet's behind you. Gas is on, welder's on. Good to go. How's it going? I'm what cranky. Is, wait, what is what is that? Don't move, don't move. Turn, turn, you, look, no, look at the camera. Look you at the camera. Had this down here, like here, and I came up. Let me see, there it is. Clunked my head. Look at that. Ow. It didn't feel good. Yeah. But That's... the bracket is now within a tenth of a degree vertically, and it's square horizontally. And now how did you I'm... get? How did you get it horizontally square? I don't know, you did it. I told you to do it because I was angry <laughs> and cranky. 
So to square it up, actually what we did is we put this in here. If you can kind of see that in the camera. You're trying to hit me again. Maybe. Boop. No, no, no. And I laid this against the inner pulley. Basically, kinda like, we check it. Kind of like that. Essentially like that. So it has two points that it's hitting on that uh, the crank pulley, and then two points that it's hitting on the power steering pulley, and we know it's square. And if that's 90, Ooh. and this is the right angle, then, then it's we're square. in the ballpark. All right. Should we get the belt put on? That's what I'm working on. All right. Make sure you leave it loose so we can adjust it. It's too loose. Oh, okay. There it is. Belt. <laughs> little tiny three rib. We got an eight rib, an eight rib, a five, and a three. <laughs> oh, I hope we don't. The fun part is actually trying to find the correct size belt. We have them now. We just got to write them down so we don't. No, that's what I mean. Oh, boy. Okay, your it should lock itself in place. What the? The wrong size socket? How did that happen? Oh, uh, that two sockets. I don't Give me a favor, good. just go kick it. Yeah. Again. It's probably going right back to the same spot. One more time? Despite you. Little one? There we go. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was like, later, more fun. Half a bump! Can you pull out on that? Yeah. Ready? And go. Oh. That didn't rotate at all, actually. No, it really isn't. Okay. Um, that actually, it moved to the middle. That's cool. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and bump it a few times and we'll see how it does. Yeah, and actually looking at this from the side, uh -huh. it almost looks like the front and rear of that pulley is splitting the inner pulley. I mean, it looks perfectly balanced. Yeah. Now, <laughs> that's funny. Now that we got the uh, pump mounted up, we've got to plumb our steering system so we can go get our lines tomorrow. Uh, the only thing we got to mount still is the pressure relief valve. Uh, because we're using a gear driven pump, this bleeds off any excess pressure. Uh, that the system sees or when, uh, because this uses a hydraulic ram, when there's a big bump, uh, it will, uh, release the pressure instead of just driving it through. I, I don't know exactly the whole physics of it, but you gotta have that after the pump. So we're gonna get that mounted, but to see where it goes, uh, cause that bleeds off back to the filter. We've got to put in this removable bar here where the filter goes and we use these cool quick disconnects that, uh, allow us to pull this bar out. The other great thing is with this bar removable, we can pull the T case out and the transmission out the side of the car, making for much easier access. Found your nut, Joe. Nay. Hey. It's just an Allen head and there's a nut on the back side. There's some that they're tapped. Uh, we use these ones from Wide Open Designs. They have a nut and so it's, uh, I like them better. The ones that are tapped on the back. They can strip out. Uh, if your nut strips out, you simply pop it out and put a new nut in. Kind of cool. We're using a radial dynamics filter mount with the uh, Donaldson filters. These guys are awesome. It's going to do a very good job of filtering our system from any contaminants. Plus, everything he does is uh, built like a heat sink, so any airflow can pull a little bit of heat out and in racing every little bit of extra cooling helps right Joe mm -hmm. something else we have to actually remount we had it in the spot before but it didn't work is the power steering cooler this cools the hydraulics after it goes through the hydro boost and steering and does the work so this is actually a very important thing and we're looking at it and we're actually going to go ahead and put it basically right here because there's airflow coming through and the tranny's pushing air down so it's going to pull air across it as well so that'll be a decent decent spot for it so 
we're gonna get this tacked up and then we'll figure out where we're putting the pressure relief valve, then measure all our plumbing to get the lines made tomorrow. And this is steel it on here so you can weld right through it and it basically evaporates. So that'll go there, we can come off with a 90 and come over. Uh, so now the pressure relief valve. Per Joe's advice, we move the pressure relief valve from down there up to here. Uh, it's further away from the drive shaft now. And that should be a little safer. That heater's loud. Science. Okay, this is a little crazy, but that's the route our stuff has to take. So now we gotta figure all this out. Fun! Fun.